Hi everyone and welcome back to our Saving Christmas series. In this series we're going through how I created the Saving Christmas game that I uh, surprise dropped on Christmas uh, period in uh, 19, uh, 2019. Uh, if you've been watching this series, hopefully you got up to this point where we started making our level. Obviously your level will look probably different from my one. Um, but what we're going to be doing in this episode is carrying on by adding little extra props and design features to our levels. So, we're going to go in to find our meshes, and let's put some. Start with putting some trees in there. So I think I want this area to be have some trees in it. So I'm going to drag in my pine tree, and I want to change the size of my pine trees to be a bit bigger. Now the materials I'm going to be using. If I actually go into the mesh itself here, I'm going to change this to use the palette one, and there we go. So now um, I can place more of these and change the size of it, rotate it a little bit, and just customize their location a little bit. Okay. They will affect your um, nav mesh, so you want to make sure no uh, goblins get locked away from the rest of the level. Um, you want to make sure there's at least some pathway possible between them. Okay. And by all means, don't forget to decorate outside your bounds as well. Um, it's just as important to making the world feel a bit more alive and interesting. Okay. Uh, let's put a tree on there as well. I'm going to give these a bit of jank as well. Let's give this a little bit of jank. Slight rotation. Like so. Again, we'll keep adding, in this case, trees to your level inside and out. Decorating the outside does mean make the world feel like a lot bigger than it actually is. So rather than this sort of diorama looking level, your world will feel far more alive. And we can also use trees to help block out um, some uh, pathways. So for example here, rather than trying to put an invisible wall in, I can just use it uh, with trees instead and block out the path for our character so they can't make their way to it. I'm also going to drag in a dead tree or two. Like so, um, make sure I'd use the palette material correctly. Save. Like so. And I'm just going to drag another one in. There. Um, this trunk, I'm going to change again the material, use the palette map, so add that snow onto it as well. Now this thing, I don't want to affect um, collision too much, so I'm going to make sure I put it to the side, out of the way, and keep an eye on those boundaries of that nav mesh. Making sure it's not um, blocking off access for some of our characters. Okay. Um, and in here, let's put uh, another tree. Put a smaller one.
And don't forget to keep testing your world to make sure that what you're doing isn't screwing it up. Okay. Cool. Um, okay, so now I'm going to put in some foliage for grass. So to do grass, we're going to go in and add the materials on first. to each of these. You want to do more because we're going to use them all. Okay, so there's my grass all textured there. I'm then gonna go into my foliage tool up here and I'm gonna select all six of those and drag them where it says drop foliage here. Now this tool, fat sadly, does take up a lot of space, but essentially, if left alone, it will uh, spawn these in, uh, all uniformly. So you're not gonna get more of one than the other. Okay, and so I've got to change my brush up here. I can change the size of my brush to whatever I like. I'm going to do a 1, 2, 8. So I've got a bit more control where I place them because I don't want it to go absolutely everywhere. And you can change its density and uh, raise density. Totally up to you. Um, but the foliage tool, we just click and drag where you want foliage to appear. And you can see it will now add foliage to the world. Wait for the shaders to compile. Like so. Now you have to be careful because sometimes it does go a bit whiffy like with all these floating bits. Um, in that case, you just want to try and get rid of them by oh, by holding down shift and clicking, you can remove them. Okay. As long as your brush doesn't go too crazy. I'm going to change my density up a, little, uh, a lot more here. And make this a lot smaller. And I can then paint where I want my grass to be. So I'm focusing on the edges around the rocks. Um, and we're just going to chuck some in there. Some around there. So again, hold down shift to erase and just normal left click to uh, paint. Now, if it's the case that you want the grass to be taller, you can click on individual assets here, and down here you can see scaling, and you can change uniform or just change, just do one in the one axis. But if I change the uniform, and let's say I do three, three as the min and max, I will now get larger ones of that one type. But I can change this to be a range if I want. So I can go one, and now I'll get a random height associated to it but i don't want that so i can leave that alone but you can also do offsets as well and totally up to you what you want to do with this sort of thing here so just going to place a few more bits and bobs around here um, okay so let's test that out and see what it looks like with all that grass in the world Let's test out our open area. Let's 
Let's see what this looks like. Okay, that's looking all right. Not too bad. Cool. So once we've got that, we're now going to work on adding rocks. So let's find the rocks. We've got loads of options here. I'm just going to pick a couple. Again, add the assets. Uh, add the material asset to it. Okay, I think that'll do it for this episode. In this episode, we've kind of finished doing the level. Um, maybe some minor touches we add on at the end, but uh, I think we're happy to continue as we have here. In the next part, we're going to make it so that our snowballs deal some damage to the goblins and knock them out. And we might try and do a auto-aim sort of assist to help the player aim and hit the goblins, but we'll see how that fares when we do our tests. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to watch that next episode right now, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey, where you can watch that plus many others, and uh, all for just $1 a month. Big shout out and thank you to all of my patrons for their support, um, and I can't wait to show you what else we've got in store for 2020. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.